Welcome back to another episode of the Executive Code Podcast. And I'm here with Nicole, and Nicole has another question that she wants to get answered. So, Nicole, what have you got for us this week? So, Paul, the last time we spoke about work-life balance, you mentioned that we're working when we're working on our purpose, we're producing you stress, which is a good type of stress that is actually important for us to have in our lives. And without it, we would become bored at best and depressed at worst. So how can we tell you stress and distress, which is bad stress, apart? And uh, how can we manage stress to ensure you stress does not become distress? Okay, all right. There's a few different things there, so let's make sure I have them all covered. Um, first of all, um, okay, stress affects um, every aspect of ourselves. So what do I mean by that? It affects your mental, your physical, and your emotional well-being. So stress can be either good or it can be bad. Now, you stress is the good stress that we want to bring into our life, whereas what people normally perceive as being stress or distress is negative in their life and therefore will have an impact on our mental, physical, and emotional well-being. So how you can tell the difference between the two of them? Um, you stress is... Um, so what I want you to start thinking about is what, when you have that feeling of excitement or you have that feeling or that sense of meaning and purpose and fulfillment in your life, that's you stress. Because you stress will actually lead for more inspiration and more motivation. You want to bring about, you want to move forward on it. This stress will feel the complete opposite meaning it's going to feel like overwhelm or fear or an anxiety. So that kind of distress is actually, um, it's chalk and cheese. So think of it from the point of view of you stress, let me just give you a few different examples. If you are moving forward in your career or you're moving forward in your business, you're going to be excited about that moving forward. And therefore that's you stress. If you're doing something new and you're excited about doing that new thing, well, then that's going to cause you stress. Um, if you are reaching a milestone or you're doing something creative or you are going on a holiday or an adventure, for example, and you're excited about it or you're motivated about it, you're inspired about it, that's all you stress. So one of the things that I'm working on right now at the moment, I know I mentioned this on, on other podcasts, um, and I'm nearly there, nearly just nearly, nearly there. And I'm still doing my research on it, and that's do a biplane wing walk. Now, for me, that's you stress. Like I was <laughs> at the weekend, I was watching a video um, because I'm trying to research, okay, what's the, what's the airfield I'll go to in order to actually do the biplane wing walk. Now, for those of you that, so what I want you to think about is that you're talking about a vintage biplane um, and you're standing on top and you're harnessed in to the top of that wing walk or the top of that wing on the biplane. And then it goes through a whole load of dimmer, different somersaults. Um, so, and then if you really want to, you can also go up with a second biplane and it's a bit like the red arrows. You're actually flying against each other and all that kind of things. That to me, when I'm watching the videos is just absolutely phenomenal. And I can't wait to do it. That's you stress. <laughs> okay. For other people, however, that can be seriously, it can be distress. So for my wife, for example, that's distress. But for me, I'm absolute, I cannot wait to actually do it. So that's you stress. So the only way maybe to discern between is it stressful or is it you stress is just feel within yourself and what's the feelings that actually comes up. So when it's coming along the lines of excitement or motivation, or you're inspired by it or you're moving forward on it. Well, then, yes, that's you stress. Your, your, you, your reaction internally is very, very different. But when you are having more negative emotions, so let me give you a few different examples of what will cause stress for, for a lot of people. Um, if, if somebody loses their job or if, for example, they're going through financial difficulties or they break up a, a particular relationship, for example, um, if there's a financial worry, if there's a health issue or a, an illness or um, something to do with health from, from that perspective, that will cause the negative stress in our life. OK, so now when you look at the two different examples and you look at the two different internal feelings that we will have or the even both the emotions, the feelings, and the thoughts that we have, they're two very, very different. So one is positive and the other is negative. We want to bring more positive stress into our life or what's referred to as you stress. So we want to bring that more into our life. In answer to another part of your question, okay, so how do we reduce stress? 
One is you kind of identify what's actually causing stress in the first place. So as I as gave in, in maybe some of the examples, is it to do with financial? Is it to do with relationships? Is it to do with health or whatever it be, or is your job or your career, or your business? What's actually causing stress? And therefore, what's the actions that can be done in order to improve the situation? So therefore, now you're actually reducing the stress and you're now getting to a position whereby you're in control. But a lot of things that cause stress is where a feeling of out of control are not having control on something. So the more you can bring control into your life from that perspective, it will actually start to reduce the stress. And um, meditation is, I cannot emphasize meditation enough to be quite honest. Um, I recommend it to all my clients. Um, I think nearly every single one of my clients, maybe I may be wrong on that, but I'm gonna say somewhere between 90 to 95% of my clients will do regular meditation because the benefits of meditation are huge. From a creativity point of view, from an innovative point of view, from reducing stress, from um, developing your intuition. There's so many different benefits of meditation that that's where the vast majority of my clients will actually do a form of meditation. So it will actually start to, to reduce your stress. Um, fear, shame, and guilt will also create stress. So therefore, if you're fearful of something or you feel shame or you feel guilty about an action that you did or something that you did, well, then that's going to cause an underlying level of stress. So therefore, it's about... How do we actually go about dissolving that fear, shame, and guilt? Um, you got to look at your diet. Um, things that um, I've learned over the years that will cause um, stress will A, will be coffee, and second, will be sugar. And not, not, not a lot of people know about the sugar one. And I've only, I've only discovered this recently based on my own research of the different consultants, different doctors I've been, I've been speaking to. And sugar causes a huge amount of stress within the body. So therefore, it's looking at how much now sugar is everywhere, meaning it's in, it's in your carbohydrates, it's in the sugar that you put in your coffee or tea, it's also in you know, the lovely crisp, creamy donuts that you might eat or the cakes that you might have. It's in the biscuits, it's literally every single thing. So it's when you look at your diet and say, okay, so what are the elements that are within your diet that can actually cause stress and then start to remove um, those elements uh, uh, from, from a stress perspective. A um, couple of different things that uh, maybe other advice I was give is um, take action. So one of the episodes that we recorded, Nicole, was um, where I explained the science behind where I use the phrase, motivation follows action. Well, then the more action that you take, well, then the more motivation you're going to increase. And therefore, that's also going to reduce your stress because you're also going to bring another dynamic, which is a feeling of being in control. A lot of people get into the point whereby they either, it's, it's the usual terminology, meaning that it's either fight or flight, but there's also one that I've recognized is which is freeze. And that will, stress will cause a freeze scenario. So therefore what you want to do is you want to take action. And then from that action, your motivation is increasing and you're getting more in control. Um, another one will be to talk to people. Um, that can be quite hard for a lot of people. But if there's somebody that you can confide in, whether it be a coach or a mentor or a partner that you have or whoever might be your friend that you know you can confide in, you absolutely trust that individual, well, then that can start to reduce the stress that, that, that a person will, will, will um, carry around with them on an ongoing basis. Um, there's two things that I regularly refer to for, for my clients, and one is self-care. So self-care is you looking after yourself but also making sure that there's nothing impacting your own self-care from external forces. So that could be your environment or it can be from other people. So where I'm referring to there will be whereby there could be physical abuse, could be mental abuse, could be emotional abuse by other people or people that are negative or what I refer to as energy vampires in our life. So that's also an element of self-care, but then self-care is also look at what are the activities that we need to do in order to build ourselves back up again. All right. And then what feeds into self-care is me time. So there's that time that we have where we're actually investing in ourselves, we're investing in our own self-care and replenishing our resources. And all of those different activities will now start to reduce the stress. And we move from being a stressful situation to being in a more joyful scenario. If you want to create more you stress in your life, the most easiest way, well, I'm going to give you a couple of different examples. 
the most easiest way is doing something creative, is doing something new. And provided it's on the basis that it's going to excite you. Because there's things that, you know, I there, there's things that I will be hesitant about doing if I haven't done them before, and that causes stress. Whereas there's other things that I haven't done before, as as I said earlier on, doing the every single time you bring that image in my mind as regards to doing a wing walk, that's creating you stress every single time I'm thinking about it. Meaning I'm excited about it, I'm motivated, I'm inspired by it. So what are the activities that you can do that are new activities that you haven't done before? Think a bit like an adventure that you want to go on. It's creating that excitement, that motivation, that drive going forward. And then therefore that's going to help to create you stress within yourself. And you stress is good. We want more you stress in our life. But the two primary, primary, primary things that's going to create you stress is living in line with your purpose, knowing what your purpose is, and moving forward and closer to fulfilling your purpose. Because when you're doing actions in line with your purpose, that's what's actually the core to creating you stress in your life. Because now what you're doing is you're moving forward on what it is that you want to accomplish. And feeding in with that is your genius drivers. Your genius drivers is what activates that part of your brain, the prefrontal cortex, in order for you to create more of that fulfillment that joy, that excitement in your life. And that's what's also then create more and more eustress. Those three elements alone will actually start to bring more eustress in their life and therefore have a much, much better life. You talked about losing one's job as distress, but what if it's losing a job you hate? Could that be eustress as well? Because, (laughs) you know, now you're open and you're available to new opportunities. It all depends on the perception that you have in losing your job. So if it's a job that you've hated, but you still are despondent about losing a job, that's going to cause stress because now what's going to kick in is the fear, the worry, the concern of what might, other people might think or the financial worry, concern, or how are you going to pay your mortgage or your rent or whatever. So it depends on the perception that you have. If your perception on the other hand is, okay, great, I've lost that particular job. I never liked it in the first place. Now it's allowing me to do what it is that I want to do. Now that's creating you stress. Absolutely. It just depends on the perception that you have at the time. We've been so conditioned, you know, um, as people to think of any stress as being bad. And so it's important to change our view of it and differentiate between good stress and bad stress and then use you stress, which is the good stress to our advantage. Uh, because without, without that, we would start feeling, you know, lack of motivation to accomplish our goals, as you mentioned, um, and a lack of meaning in life uh, without enough use stress in not striving for goals or overcoming challenges or not having a reason to wake up in the morning is, is pretty harmful. So use stress keeps us happy and healthy in a way. It does. Yeah. Yeah. And not, not many people know about it. And that's, that's the thing. So they, they, they have all the symptoms, but they don't understand what's actually going to create that drive or that mojo that people refer to in our life and that it's not that purpose and that meaning that we actually bring into our life not many people know about the stress graph as well it's kind of like a it goes up you know your productivity goes up a little bit quite a bit with uh, a little bit of stress but then when there's a lot of stress you know your performance drastically decreases and degrades and it's a kind of like a hill um, but it's skewed to one side <laughs> exactly right and then what also happens for a lot of people is that they they have a constant level of stress in their life and they're not allowing that, for one bit word, they're not allowing that vent to release some of that stress. Um, and therefore they're never, because now that stress becomes the new norm, your body cannot deal with that constant level of stress. Our body is designed to deal with peaks and troughs of stress, but not a constant repeat of stress. So therefore, if you're not doing activities, that are going to relieve you from that stress, well, then now you're actually doing a huge amount of detriment to your body. Forget about, apart from your mind and your own mental well-being and your emotional well-being, but the actual physical impact on your body is absolutely huge. And most people aren't aware of it because they're going through a career or building a business and all that kind of thing, and they're just this, on this constant adrenaline. But then what actually happens is that the body becomes immune to it. And therefore now, what you're doing is um, it impacts in some way within your body. It shows up and it has to show up because it's the body's feedback mechanism to, to us as conscious beings in order to figure out, actually, no, there's a problem here. 
So whether that's high blood pressure or whether it's um, something that shows up by way of we have a breakdown in some way or become exhausted or um, it's so many different ways of how we can actually show up in our life, different blood test results that will, will show up. And it's just indicators to show, no, okay, this level of stress cannot be maintained. And it's literally given us the flag to say, no, we've got to actually do something about this. And for some people, it's left too late. It can be then formed into either former cancer or somebody has a heart attack or one of the, so even if you look at the statistics, the highest number of heart attacks happen on a Monday morning because and what the research has found is because it's the stress of the people waking up on a Monday morning, going to jobs that they actually dislike, and therefore it's causing more and more stress. So the highest proportion of heart attacks actually happen on a Monday morning. So that gives an indication as regards to the level of stress that's within society. Um, so the question what you have for yourself is, well, what is your level of stress? Are you, are you bringing good stress into your life? Are you bringing new stress into your life? Or what is it that you're doing or what are the activities that you're doing in order to reduce your own levels of stress? And that's all bringing you to much more healthy well-being in your life, both mental, physical, and emotional. So just a couple of things that you may want to look at in terms of the stress and also a way of how you can bring more you stress into your life. If you want to find out more, come join us in our community. It's an online community and you'll find all the ways of how you, you can connect with us, our resources that are available on our website. Just go over to www.paulwilliamdavis.com and you find all the different ways and all the different resources that are available there for you to help you on your journey. And as I said in the episode, in answer to your question, Nicole, the best way of creating new stress is knowing your genius drivers and living in life on purpose. That's what creates the maximum you stress in your life, the positive stress, the more that we want in our life. And you find it all those ways by going to our website, www.paulwilliamdavis.com. But until next time, I wish you every success. Mm -hmm.